Welcome back to the second video of the SD branch from scratch video series. In the last video, we've covered the creation of an Urban Center account as well as adding the hardware, license keys, and creating sites and groups using the installer app. In this video, we will use a new 9004 and configure that for our branch location. In order to do that, I will connect the branch to the internet, show you the bare minimum configuration to get you started and take it from there. But first, let's come back to the topic of configuration management in Central through the concepts of groups. In the last video, we've created a group but did not really get into the detail of it, so let's do that just now. A group in Aruba Central is the primary configuration element that functions as a container for device management, monitoring and maintenance. And you can configure a group through the GUI or CLI and you can just mix and match based on device type. But what this really means is that you can configure important policies on a global level, such as do I want to steer the traffic of my clients through the internet line or would I prefer the MPLS line? But also firewall security policies such as cameras should only communicate to my CCTV server and not the corporate users. And the idea behind this is that up to 80 or 90% of a configuration is done on a group level and the configuration is then consistent across all your branches. The best thing about this hierarchical configuration management is that it does not only save you loads of time rolling it out for new locations, but when security policies need to be modified or changed, you can also benefit from the same config management, so you don't need to change every firewall rule for every location, for example. Of course, there are configuration parameters that are location or device specific, such as the IP address management, uh, IP address, VRP, DHP, uh, but as well as SNMP uh, settings, time zone, etc. This is something that can be configured to as well the graphical user interface, but also in a bulk edit, as in a CSV file, the API, or of course CLI templates. We're back again at the Aruba Central dashboard, and the first thing that we'll do is check the licenses that are attached to the branch gateways, just to make sure that when the uh, devices connect to the Aruba system, uh, we make sure that it's uh, that they're all good to go to get their configuration because they need to have a valid subscription in order to go through the configuration and software upgrades. So in order to do that, I will click to account home and this will bring me to the admin page where I can assign new licenses, uh, see the audit trail, create uh, or interact with the API, uh, create new users and that sort of stuff. But now first head over to subscription assignment and this is where you see that the auto subscription is on. And over here, you'll see the gateway subscriptions. And currently, uh, it has a, uh, these three branch gateways that we've added in the first video. These have a device management subscription attached to them. But what we want is to uh, give it uh, for at least a 9004 to have an ID int uh, intrusion detection prevention system license. And for that, we have the advanced with security feature. And for these two, the data center uh, branch gateway VPN concentrators will uh, give it the license foundation. And in terms of licensing, uh, this is all that is needed in order to license these devices and for them to uh, communicate with uh, the Aruba Central platform. So just before we're going to dig into the uh, configuration part, so going to network operations and then launch, Let's first take a look at the process of uh, the zero touch provisioning by going to the help button and then documentation center. Going to getting started with central. And then over here, opening firewall ports for device communication. In general, everything that is needed is port 443 HTTPS to your cluster and then Aruba activate, which is the main communication uh, for every Aruba device that uh, connects to the internet, it will try to resolve device at arubanetworks.com in order to see uh, whether device is subscribed to Aruba Central or to Aruba Airwave or anything like that. Um, so this is the first step that um, that's taken. And from that point on, Aruba Activate will uh, point the device to the cluster where it is subscribed. So in our case, that will be the European cluster over here. Now that we have assigned the licenses to the branch gateways, it's time to begin with the configuration that is needed to zero touch provision our branch. 
I'll head over to the ABC branch group and the first thing that we'll do is head over to devices, select the gateways, tab and then head over to the config. And it will, Central will ask us um, a one-time parameter uh, for a branch gateway group uh, to set the group type. And this can either be a branch gateway or a VPN constrator. And this is a one-time setting and this cannot be changed. So for the ABC branch, we'll select the branch gateway as a group type. And for, the, for our data center, we'll select the VPN concentrator group type. I'll save the settings and Central will then redirect us to the wizard. And for this particular tutorial uh, series, uh, I'm going to skip the wizard because I think it's important that you understand uh, which uh, parameters are being set by the wizard. So I'm gonna cancel this out and head over to the advanced mode. And uh, really the most important setting here is the system IP address. And a system IP address is sort of an, uh, sort of like a loopback IP address on the branch gateway, uh, which acts as the uh, main communication IP for radius, traffic, uh, SNMP, um, time setting, that sort of stuff. So it's really important to uh, set this uh, up. And we can do that by heading over to the interface setting and then pool management. Because central will, we will define a range and central will then give out an IP address uh, within that range. And, it's, uh, and it is mandatory that this particular IP range is not duplicate or used within any other branch location and that this range is also advertised to your devices so that for example, your radio server can also find this particular subnet range. So we'll define one over here called management central. And please note that your IP range has to be big enough to support all your branch gateways. And the next thing to do is to attach this particular pool to a VLAN interface. And, that, and this can be any name or VLAN number that you wish. I'll be using VLAN 4000 for that. You have to enable routing and then the IP assignment is a gateway pool and it will automatically fill in the particular VLAN pool. It's also important, really important, that you enable this checkbox to force the operational status up. Because it's a loopback interface, we won't tie this particular interface to a physical uh, adapter. And this means that if this particular IP address is not attached to a physical interface, the interface will go down. So it's important to have this up. So now that we have tied this VLAN pool to a VLAN interface, we can now attach this to the system IP address over here. And it will reboot if there are any active devices online. So it is advised that you only do this once. It is now time to configure the WAN interfaces, so the R internet link and the MPLS one. And this is roughly the same procedure where I'll create a VLAN interface for the MPLS and internet line and then attach it to a physical port. Give it 4094. This is also the default VLAN that is being used by a branch gateway when it comes up. So this will be the um, access VLAN. Uh, where it will try to receive its IP parameters from and then reach out to Aruba Central and activate. So I'll keep this the same for, for my internet link and use uh, VLAN 4093 for the MPLS one. And it's important to note that on a group level, I'll configure this particular, these particular VLAN interfaces instead of static to DHP, to receive a DHP, and then on a device level, I'll override it to a static IP address. Give the parameter net outside. And I'll do the same for the MPLS link as well. Now that I've created the VLAN interfaces, it's time to configure that for the ports. And this is as well on a group level. So this means that every branch location will have these predefined settings. 
And this is really powerful for the sake of standardization. So port 2 and port 3 will be used for the internet links. So WAN and then access VLAN 4093 for the MPLS link. And please note that there is a default policy when you define a WAN link for a firewall policy, which you can find under security and then policies. And this really determines that um, ICMP is allowed, but you cannot SSH into the box from the internet. It is not advised to remove this, but you can customize this obviously uh, with your own ACL. And I'll call this uplink MPS. Disable spanning tree for my lab. Now that I've configured the WAN interfaces, I'll also configure a LAN interface. This is not needed to zero touch provision your branch, but it is nice to at least have some IP connectivity when the branch uh, initially comes up. So I'll head over to the VLANs and call this LAN-corp and give it VLAN 10. The only thing that I really do on a group level is define the VLAN name and the VLAN ID and enable routing because the IP assignment will obviously be done on the branch or device uh, level because you don't want the same IP addresses across all your branches. So I enable routing, save the setting and then attach this particular VLAN to this particular port 000 and define this as a LAN port. As you can see over here, no policies automatically defined there VLAN 10 and I'll call the interface LAN Corp. And LDP is automatically enabled. Click on save settings. And this is really everything that you need to do from perspective for the zero touch provisioning. We can now also set settings such as the clock settings and the DNS. So I'll fill in the FQDN for that. Enable the burst mode and then the time zone will be Amsterdam. And the last few settings that I'm going to configure on the group level are enabling the app or the application visibility feature on the branch gateway as well as enabling DHCP. First, I'll enable DHCP on a global level. So this means that the DHCP process will start on every branch gateway, like that. And the DHCP pools will be configured on a device level. And in order to enable the application visibility, I'll head over to security applications and then check the boxes of AppRF under application visibility. and then enable geolocation and IP classification for web content filtering. I will now plug in the 9004 and let the zero touch provisioning process start. I'll post a link to the full process um, of the recording of the zero touch provisioning for the people that are interested in that for the sake of the length of this particular video. I'll just skip over to uh, 9004 that has checked in with Central. And that's all there is uh, for the minimum configuration for enabling our branch. I'll head over to all devices. And as you can see, I've connected the branch gateway and it's already provisioned with central over here. You can see that it is under the group and we can see some additional information of this particular device. And as we configure more, you will also see some additional information uh, coming into the system as well. So we can see our LAN interfaces that are configured currently, the IP addresses. So this is uh, our management central, our system IP address over here, and the WAN interface on a DHP level. 
and for example also our route table over here which we can refresh and sessions that are happening from the branch as well. So let's head over to our device configuration and configure this particular branch. So the first thing that I'll do is give it a host name, call it branch one, branch gateway one. And on the clock settings, you can already see some information that's inherited from our group over here. So anything that we need to configure uh, basically are the interface settings. So I'm going to configure the LAN interface as well as configure or migrate the uh, IP address settings from the MPLS and internet link from DHP to static. Because if I take a look on the interface settings, uh, for example, VLAN 4093 and 4, we can see that it's still inherited under DHP. And the thing that I'm going to do is configure it or migrate to it to static. But please bear in mind, if you have currently DHP configured, it also has an IP default gateway received from DHP. If I'm going to change this to static, the IP default gateway will also disappear. And as, as I only have right now only one internet link, the internet link connected, I will break the connectivity to Aruba Central. And this will mean that the device will come in a rollback state to revert back to the last known configuration that it was able to contact Aruba Central. So we'll try to revert to back to DHP. In order to make this as seamless as possible, I'll first enable a default gateway or define that on the device for uh, reaching over the internet link and then convert it to static. So I'll head over to routing and then static default gateway and I'll define my internet and MPLS default gateways here. Now that I've configured the default gateways, it's time to configure the interfaces as well. So I'll configure the MPLS link from the HP option to static. Now that I'm done with configuring the WAN links, it's now time for configuring the internal interface over here. So as you can see on a group level, it has been defined as static and I'll now fill in the parameters for the LAN interface. And just check the box, act as DHP server and fill in this IP address for the default gateway. So taking a look or validating the DHP scope, uh, I can head over to DHP and the IP DHP server is enabled on a group level and this is device specific on a branch gateway. So I'll now head over to the device itself and you can see that the name that we've defined is now ta taken in consideration to the LAN and we can also see now that the MPLS interface is also configured as well as the internet link. And we should be able to see that under the routing table as well. If I would now plug in my MPLS line as well and refresh the routing table, you see that I now have a static default gateway of my MPLS link as well and the link is connected. And the power of Aruba Central is that it not only allows you to monitor and manage the device if you ever feel the need to uh, uh, connect to the device over to uh, Central, you can just open up a remote console and log in with your credentials um, to dig into the command line interface as needed as well.
like this. And we can validate the same that we just saw on Aruba Central as well. And that's a wrap. This was the second video of the SD branch from scratch series. We've covered the concept of group management and we've configured and deployed a branch gateway. In the next video, we'll cover the configuration and deployment of the VPN concentrator in the data center. And per the usual, I hope you find this informative. If you want to receive updates and would like to see more of these videos, like and subscribe and feel free to leave any questions or comments below this video.